Now, is the installation of my LPG cylinder breaking all the rules and regulations? Anyway, let's get on with it and find out if it actually is or not. Now, if you're looking for a training manual to go along with these videos, why don't you check out Viper Gas? So they produce a hard copy like this one, or you can download the app and you can get this direct to your smartphone. So I will put in the description down below all the information you require to get in touch with Viper Gas. Now first, let's have a look at this actual tank positioning. So there should be a minimum distance called the tank separational distance between the tank and any buildings or the boundary line or fixed source of ignition. So from the drawing here, you can see the tank needs to be three meters away from the building and it needs to be three meters away from any garage and also 1.5 meters away from any source of power cables going over the top. You can also see the road which is passing at the side of this tank needs to be a minimum of 2.75 meters wide and that's so the actual tanker can pass up the side of the tank without damaging it. Also the tank can actually have a boundary wall put around it but not on all four sides. Vessels should be sighted so that when they are being filled the tanker driver can see both the connection of the tanker and at the storage vessel. The route of the hose from the tanker to the storage tank should ensure that the hose will not pass through any buildings or go over any walls or hedges. In case of leak or leaks, there should be plenty of room around the tank to ensure that there is good airflow so that the pockets of the heavier than air LPG vapours cannot build up around them. It is also very important to keep the area around the tank free from rubbish, especially if the rubbish is combustible and it could also reduce the levels of ventilation around the tank. For similar reasons, keep weeds and grass down from around the tank. If you choose to use a weed killer, make sure the weed killer doesn't dry out the weeds because this will make the dead plants easier to ignite. So now we know what we need to comply with, let's actually see if we do comply with all that. In a nutshell, it doesn't look like it. We, uh, seem to be surrounded by bushes not a meter away anyway let's get the gate open and have a closer look so on this right hand side there's not a meter to the fence but technically is that fence open if we have a look on this left hand side it's more of an inch rather than a meter mm. <sighs> it doesn't really comply anywhere does it so uh, yeah we need to do something seriously about it because it just doesn't comply so as you can see the biggest unsafe situation we have here is excessive vegetation around the tank itself so if we look at IGM G11, the unsafe situations procedure itself, 1212, vessel surrounded by excessive vegetation, creating a restriction on ventilation and combustion hazard, we will be classing it as at risk. Now what I should do because of this fault, I should contact or advise the gas user responsible person to contact the gas supplier. And iGEM tells us turning off will not remove the risk and the danger do not use label is not to be used, but I would have to fill in a warning notice for myself. So it's just easier to get rid of the bushes. So it turns out it isn't legal at all. So we better get on with it and make it legal. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all this lattice fence. First of all, we need to get rid of the gate. Now back from our local screw fix and I've bought myself an extendable hedge trimmer. 
You know how hard they were to get these. I had to drive around everywhere to try and get one. Anyway, first thing I need to do is do something with all this. I need to remove it all because one, it's leaning anyway and it needs installing correctly. And two, it's just in the way. So I'm going to get rid of this first before I start on this. Well, that didn't take long did it to take that down so that's the fence down very very easily now time for some digging <laughs> Now let's have a look and see what I paid £69 for, that's a groove fix. <laughs> so, what have we got? Ooh, see if I can do some damage with that. So the saw, long cable, and then the extension pole. And I'm guessing I oh, know you can't just make it a shorter angle, I don't think. Or you might be able to. Anyway, so that's why I needed it because of this long pull. And then shoulder strap and destructions. They're not needed, are they? So, and an empty box. Except for a bit of cardboard and a, another empty box. So, that's what we got. So let's get it together and let's start trimming these bushes. So what I bought is a Titan 50 centimeter pole hedge trimmer. So the 50 centimeters refers to the blade length. The blade tip has a protector on it and the teeth are laser cut. The teeth are 22 millimeters apart and it has a head which pivots to 120 degrees. And finally, it has a reach of 165 centimeters. And this is why I bought this particular one because of the extending handle. Now let's put it all together and see exactly if it does what it says on the box. So looks like there's two holes there. And inside here is two pins. So I guess that goes like that. And that screws up like that. And then if I want to extend the pole, that's all right. It's a bit weighty on the end. It's a beast of a thing. And then I guess, yep, yeah, just press that button in. And then I've got the adjustable head. That's pretty cool. And then now all this is, is an extension lead because it comes with a plug on the end. So obviously that plugs into there. So depending on whether you need a big extension lead or not, it comes with a plug on the end. I've never seen that before. It's normally a different plug, isn't it? It's got a 13 amp fuse in there. Anyway, how easy was that? Now it comes with a shoulder strap, which just clips on there to take, help you take the weight. And then there's just a button here, which you pull back to order and press. So I do feel like I'm a bit too far away at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
So it turns out needed a little bit more than a hedge trimmer. So after removing quite a few of the leaves, it turns out I needed to cut back quite a lot of the branches. So out came my little wood saw and I've had a really good hack at all these trees, hopefully giving me enough space now so I am legal. So I've had enough now. It's five o'clock. It's 25 degrees. The sun is beating down now. But I think after today's work, I've now got my LPG cylinder legal. And I think when the Caligas guy comes to top it back up, he's not going to refuse to. Anyway, shall we see what I've done then? So hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.